Welcome to this video. Let's take a closer look at a specific RxJS operator. For this video, I picked the filter operator, which is really interesting and which, as the name implies, allows us to filter out some of the values which are emitted by an observable. So here we got a stream of data emitted by that observable and we got the observer with the next functions on and right now all values meet the next function in our subscription here, of course. Time to stop that and to add our filter operator. Now the filter operator takes a function as an argument and this function defines whether a data piece, one of these values, is allowed to continue its journey or not. So all values reach the operator, of course, but thereafter only some make it to the next function. Let's say these two. The other don't make it through the filter because they don't satisfy the condition we set up there. So these two then continue to the next function. The rest, the other events, are just dropped. Now let's take a closer look at this in a real example in JS Fiddle. So here in JS Fiddle, I only have a script import which imports RxJS from the installation page at the very bottom using the CDN. Make sure to use the right version there. And then I want to use the filter function. So for that we obviously need an observable. So I will create a new observable and I will use the RxJS package, observable and then the interval method because I want to emit a new ascending number every second let's say. So I'll bring this to a new line. This will automatically give me such a number every second. That's a very convenient way of creating a simple observable. Now in this observable, I or on this observable, I obviously want to subscribe. So I can directly use it, observable, call the subscribe method and pass my observer to it. I could have stored the observer in a variable before, but I will just pass it as an object with the next function, which obviously receives the value. And as in other videos too, I just want to log the value. Now I'll also add the error function here, where I get any error I might receive and where I will then simply log error and then also the error object or whatever I get here. I won't add complete because the interval here can't be completed. It will keep on emitting values until our app is done. So this is our observable here. This is our observer being subscribed to it. Now let's use the filter operator. The filter operator works like that. I nest it or I move it in between my observable and the subscribe function as we do for all operators because they should run before we subscribe to it so that we subscribe to the changed value. And now filter as explained gets a function where we receive the value and actually besides this function where we will soon move our code we want to execute, you could pass a second argument which defines what this, the this keyword, will refer to inside of this function. So if I pass this here, I could ensure that if I call this inside of the function body, I'm referring to this outside of it. Confusing? Maybe check some videos, tutorials on this in JavaScript. It can be tricky. Now I don't need the second argument here since I won't use this. Instead, all I want to do here is I want to return whether or not the value we get in this iteration in this function call here should be allowed to continue or not. Therefore, what filter has to return is just true or false and our XJS will do the rest. If it is true, our XJS will use the value we passed into the function and allow its journey. And if we change the value inside of this function, that won't matter. It will take the original value. If we return false, our XJS will drop the value. So here I want to return, well, as I said, true or false, we could hard code it, but that would be a bit boring. Instead, since I know that value will be an incrementing integer, I want to return value modulus two equals zero, which basically is a check to determine whether it's an even number. Because modulus gives us the remainder of a division and if that is zero, it was an even number. If that is anything else, it was an odd number. If I hit control enter now, we indeed see zero. Then we see two, we see four. We don't see the odd numbers. And that is simply due to our filter. Also recognize 
that error isn't called for the other numbers. Otherwise, we would see error or something on the right. Because it's not an error, it's just a drop. Filter won't throw an error for any elements it filters out, and that's the case for all operators. They don't give us an error here. They simply just drop the value. That is how we can use filter, and of course, you can have way more complex conditions in there. You could check anything. You could do whatever you need to do to determine whether this value should be allowed to continue or not. You don't even have to use the value in your condition, but most of the time you will probably do that, because why would you care about the value otherwise? I hope this was helpful. See you in other videos, maybe. Bye.